The next step here is to split this up in two parts. So let's see if we could change this from one solid body into two bodies. Okay, splitting. So I go for insert, feature and split. Split wants a knife. So I will choose a flat surface. And in this case, I have a flat surface here. I could also use a plane for cutting or I could import uh, a surface from another software for cutting. I need to choose cut to have it calculating all the different parts and then I say that part and that part should be involved in this splitting. Uh, we also have a possibility here to consume, to delete bodies, but I don't want that. so. It's perfect like it is. I accept to have two bodies and I choose OK. And in the solid bodies folder we now have this piece and we have this piece and this is the head here. So if you like we could also rename it. And hide it. So I go for a right click and choose hide. So if we tumble in space now, we can still see the image there. Uh, if you like, we could now hide the image and actually the complete sketch that we had in the beginning. So I will go for the bounding box sketch and hide it. Okay, clean up a little bit. Let's make a spiral. But before you do the spiral, we need to decide for the base circle, uh, the depth of the thread. So I go for a sketch. And in this case, I would like to sketch on the side there. You choose sketch, click on this side of the cylinder. Look at the corner. We are inside a sketch here now. Let's go for a circle. If you know the exact uh, size here of, of this circle, you could of course dimension it. I accept that base circle and that's the only thing we need to do in that sketch. Maybe rename it base circle. Okay. Now it's time to do the spiral. And the spiral doesn't really need this solid body here, but it's nice to see uh, that we will have a spiral that is long enough. So I will keep it visible. I go for feature. In this case, I need to go for insert curve. You will not find it under feature because it's not making any solid body. It's a curve. I go down to helix spiral. Insert curve spiral. It want us to choose a sketch and we have already made a sketch that contains a single circle. So this is perfect. I could choose it in the graphic area or I could click on this plus here and click on the base circle sketch. We get a preview and we could instantly see that it goes in the wrong direction here. So I could just take the arrow here and drag it all the way along here. And I, I want it to be a little bit extra long here so I know it goes through. Uh, the pitch here is way too big. So for an metric six millimeter it could possibly 0 0.8 millimeter and we need a lot of revolutions so maybe 25 uh, not really a little bit more so let's do 30 revolutions a little bit more than we need okay that's it except so that was a curve so we have made a curve here now the next step is to make a sketch that we could sweep all the way along here to get the thread. Uh, and to do that, there is 
a thing that you might do that help you out. Uh, I will do a point. I will do that reference point by going for feature, reference geometry, and point. This will help me to make a plane in the normal direction of the spiral, just in the beginning of the spiral. So I go for reference geometry and point. This might be possible to do in another way. So this is just one proposal. Reference geometry, point. I will choose uh, the end of the spiral here. But before I do that, we, we can also see that we have different possibilities to choose what will happen. And in this case, I would actually like it to be a certain distance along the curve. Actually, the distance of zero. And it doesn't accept zero distance, but zero percentage is fine. So I go for zero percentage, move out and click on, on this spiral. And now we can see that in the blue window we have an edge and that is actually the spiral there. You could also get a preview there. Uh, so if you change the value here, you can see that we move along this spiral. But zero, enter. So we would like to be in the beginning. Great. Accept point. So in the tree, the last thing we did is this point. And now we will use that point to make a plane. So I choose reference geometry again, but now I'll make a plane. So I go for plane, and it needs some input. The first input I will go for is the point. So I could choose it here, or graphic, in the graphic view here. It's a little bit tricky here, so maybe go for the tree. We would like to have a second reference, and that would be the spiral. So I will click on the spiral as well. And now we have a preview of a plane there. So if I try to tumble here in space, we might see that it's going in an angle. So that's, that's perfect. That's exactly what we would like it to do, because it's in a normal direction there. So we accept this plane. And now we have a plane that we could use for the cut that we would like to sweep. And you could actually see that it's in an angle quite clearly. So we have this plane picked and I go for a sketch. I zoom in here and if you're working in a sketch, look at the corner, we are in a sketch. It's a good idea to work flat. So I go for flat direction by choosing space bar and normal two. It flips around and then I zoom in and now I will make the profile for the cut. Um, in this case, I might use a center line here to help me. So I make a center line, just go straight out escape and then I choose a conic you could do whatever shape you like actually you could use a, a spline here if you like so let's go for a spline instead to show that that works great if you go for a spline it might be useful with another center line so if I make a center line from there to there and force it to be symmetrical. Uh, you could do that by choosing the midpoint, but you could also do it by choosing three different objects, and one of them being a center line. So I click that one, shift click a center line, and shift click this one. I have a possibility to choose symmetric. So SolidWorks now understand that those two points need to be symmetric around the center line. So if I do that, I could take one of these and the other will be symmetric distanced on the other side. 
Now I could go for spline. So if I go for spline, I could click there, down there, and go up again. And now I could just choose escape. Be careful that you close this loop here. So I go for a solid line from that to that. And then I realized that I could of course done that immediately. Uh, so you should know that you could flip a construction line into a solid. So I choose escape and show that you could just right click on a line. And here you could flip it from construction to a solid line. Okay. The width here is okay I believe because this will sweep and come up again and it will be quite close but I think we will be fine so we will have a little bit of material left there so I accept this sketch and now we have a profile and a sweep a thing that we could sweep so let's see what happens if we try to use cut sweep so under feature you have swept cut if it's grayed out it's probably because you have hidden both solid bodies it needs a body to be visible I choose swept cut if you hover uh, above the blue window it says profile and we have a profile here so I click on that one if you hover above this one, it says path, and we have a path, and that is the spiral. So I go in and click on that one. Wow, we get a preview. This looks great. So if you look at this, we have a preview, and there is so close together. But let's accept this anyway. Yeah, turned out great. If you now like, you could of course expand this one and go into the sketch here and change the size of, of the, the cut here. Uh, so this could easily be adjusted, but this is, this is perfect. Okay.